Welcome to South Aussie Shooting Channel. Today's video will be about how to reload 308 Winchester on a Dillon 550B and the equipment that you'll need is cases and 308 and you can also need a lube pad you can buy any lube pad you want uh, I got this smart reloader one that has the case holder in it so that you can organize all your cases and also fill the powder up manually if you want I uh, don't fill the powder up manually at the moment I'm uh, just doing it with the progressive press at the moment I don't want to do single stage uh, reloading at the moment so I'm doing it progressively which saves time and uh, this has a lube pad on it it's just a foam that uh, holds a lubricant on it and uh, I'll show you how that works in a minute in the next section um, this is a caliper it uh, measures a uh, digital uh, every time you pull the scale back it goes up and you put your case on top here and move it up until it stops and it's about two inches and one which is under the 2005 which they're supposed to be but I haven't really got the hang of the metal lathe as well the trimmer I haven't really got a hang of uh, how to actually do it properly and get the same measurement for every case because every case is longer or shorter and uh, I try and put the case inside the the uh, lathe and uh, always comes out to a different measurement um, so most of them still fit even under just try not go too under uh, 190 uh, so 1990 I think um, also lime and case prep tools got these for $90 uh, they're in uh, small small uh, primer pockets and large primer pockets uh, to clean the uh, cases these are the most important tools that you'll need to uh, prep your case cases uh, for firing um, you got your deburring inside, outside deburring. This is a primer pocket reamer, I think. Um, this is a primer. Uh, it uh, scrapes the edges of the the primer pocket so the primer's fitting correctly, so they're not tight fit. There's a primer cleaner. Um, then you got your smaller primer cleaner, small arena and smaller primer and also you got scales that any scales would do but uh, this is an uh, electric uh, scale these are 0.1 accuracy uh, I find that, that it is really accurate without uh, any uh, wind on it. Uh, it will affect the uh, result. Um, these are also about $50. Or you can go on eBay and get them for 2 3 bucks probably. Um, that's the best option to do. Is uh, buy things off of eBay because that's really cheap. Also, you can get uh, a bullet puller. I got the Smart Reloader one. This is also about $35. Uh, this will save you quite a bit of time. And uh, that works really good. They might not last as longer. I had one that actually broke in uh, my previous video of uh, the smart reloader, the one before because I had to replace it it was the Lyman one and that uh, broke in half when I put it on the ground 
so that was a very good quality so I bought Smart Reloader one and it hasn't broken so different brands have different uh, strength points also safety glasses is the biggest one always wear safety glasses when you're reloading because uh, primers can explode or you can get um, powder in your eye or something uh, anything, even the case lube, if you go and scratch your eye or something, uh, you might have some uh, thing that you don't want in your eye. So, it might uh, deter you from touching your eye with the dangerous chemicals. Um, also, you need powder. I'm using ADI 2208. Um, that's the Australian uh, brand, ADI. I don't use any other uh, powders at the moment. I am just got into reloading for myself. Um, so ADI is, has all the uh, stats and books and it's all free online. Uh, just on their website. Um, RCBS case loop. This stuff is about six, seven dollars. Um, this can uh, help you with uh, your case not getting stuck in your press uh, most people use uh, RCBS lube or Hornady uh, one shot you just spray on it's in a can and so that it doesn't get stuck in the press you'll learn that uh, every time you will have to lube each case instead of one every five which other videos I've seen on YouTube say because they do get stuck so it's good to uh, put lube on every single one so that doesn't happen um, also we'll have uh, primers I'm using Federal at the moment uh, these about $44 or so which is uh, really cheap some shops uh, $60 for a thousand so there's about 40 something, so there's about $4 to $5 each per hundred, uh, which is really cheap, and normally about 5 cents each on uh, your loading chart if you have one to keep uh, costing down. And then you can see how much you're actually spending and how much you're saving. At the moment I'm using Barnes Match Burners, 175 grains. Um, I've recently tested them. Uh, I got uh, one in, around one inch at uh, 200. I'll uh, put some of those pictures up after. Um, but they're just my first reload, so this will be my second uh, reload attempt. Uh, I'm going to put uh, a bit less powder in there. And uh, some with a bit more. So in between the uh, maximum and the minimum, I had 42 grains in there and uh, 45. So now I'm going to try about 43 and 44 and uh, see how that improves. And I also will put a video of that up. And then uh, you can see it in action at the range. And uh, these do make quite a big hole in targets. I found... Uh, uh, yeah, these are around $44.50 or so. Uh, that I thought it was pretty cheap for a uh, good brand bullets. Um, yep. Also, um, on the Dylan side of things, you need a primer tube. This uh, picks up primers and uh, you put it in the press and pull the pin and the primers fall out the bottom into the press and uh, you're ready to start loading so I'll uh, show you the press side of things now and one more thing but I didn't mention it but if you are going to clean your cases uh, with the uh, tumbler that's also what you do uh, tumble your brass after you fire them uh, when they're brand new in the packet you don't actually have to tumble them they're already brand new but you do have to uh, resize them 
and uh, trim him because the new ones I tried putting him in my my gun and they wouldn't chamber which is really weird but I found out that it's good to uh, trim them and uh, get them sized and full length most people have neck sizing as well but it's a bit different it's just sizing the uh, the neck part which is there the top bit uh, the full length size is actually going through the whole case and uh, making sure everything's all straight and the uh, the neck is open for your bullet to fit in um, so yeah I got a Lyman a Turbo Pro uh, 1200 uh, they're about $100-$90 um, or you can get them off eBay probably cheaper so, so that is a plus you can get metal tumblers and uh, other plastic tumblers but I'm not sure what is better uh, depends on your preference um, but I just bought the cheapest one and that works for me for everything from pistol to rifle um, it fits a lot in so I'm pretty happy with it is to check all your dies are screwed in correctly and to the correct height, your seating height, your powder throwing, uh, your stage one which does your sizing, depriming and repriming and the crimping die to set to the correct tension basically check all your parts and uh, also oil your machine I have also keep Nylon Easy Glide uh, what's it called silicon spray and this helps with uh, your lubing of the machine you do the ram here and also lift the ram up and oil the insides of that mostly you can see all the oil that builds up there that's the only problem with it, it's a bit messy. Step one, tumble your brass. Step two, get your pad, lube pad, and uh, put uh, the RCBS lube on there. And then oh, you get your case, roll it over. Make sure you push the neck down to uh, get the lube on and then put it back in the uh, case and then get another one and do the same, you keep rolling it, put it back. I usually do 50 at a time as you can see. I previously done this uh, beforehand. Um, all 50 are done. Step 3. Pick up primers. and place in the primer tube pulling the pin primers go into the hole closing the primer beeper and placing this weight that goes down and it automatically lets you know how many primers are left and it beeps like that when primers are low and all you do is pull it back out and do the same action that I showed you before there's a primer tube and place the primer tube back on and pull the tag out make sure you have this little ring in at all times or else your primers are going to be all over the floor uh, it stops the primers from falling out depriming resizing and repriming and then what that does is the ram goes up 
you can see the whole case goes inside resizing it to full length pull it down and then that thing you can see here is the primer thing that uh, pushes the primer out and uh, also same time resizing it on the downstroke push forward there's a little gap in between the tray where it falls out as you can see that the press moves down and that pushes the primer in uh, it's a live primer and then we can move on to the next stage manually pushing it you push these little silver bits on the side which moves it to the next stage which is around the other side which is the powder charge so it's stage 7 you, all you do is lift it up same thing this actually powder dispenser moves up as the case goes in and it will come back down and there will be a charge inside the case uh, what you'll need to do sometimes is take these little silver pins out which hold the cases in sometimes they're really hard to get out and I can now check to see if any powder is in there as you can see there's powder in there now I these are about 45 grains I'm now going to change them to 44 or 43.5 as lower charges I found are more likely to be more accurate than faster loads but uh, depends on what you're actually wanting to do or longer ranges you'll need more powder for it to um, less drop so the next stage is a 8 which is the uh, powder checking so once that is done uh, you have to get the electronic scale or getting the normal gravity scales um, to check your powder and make sure it's what you want and it's not double charging uh, double charging means that you've actually pulled the handle twice and you'll know when there's an overcharge with a 308 case or any other case depending on how much powder actually goes in and so it does overflow as soon as you lift up the ram all the powder will start falling out of the powder bar up there and you'll have a mess I've done it before so I recommend that you do not double charge it uh, it can happen with a manual indexer as I've had you've just forgotten to uh, push the index and uh, it's double charged and you'll have a big mess to clean up so weighing it on on that scale then what we'll do is get your case and you put it back inside the I think it's step 8 now or 9 yeah. put it back in and then what you'll do is empty the case out and put it back into the powder bar once you know what your actual charge is and then what you'll do is recharge it and then it will be the correct charge then you'll index it to the seating position at the moment I have a little bit of primer troubles as you can see right now that that doesn't actually want to go over the primers and some of the primers actually you need to lift up the ram just a little bit to get it to move you can see that 
some of these primer bits uh, extruded out of the case a bit but all you do is twist this little thing here up or down and that actually raises the ram up higher or lower so depending on what your settings are will be different um, all you do is just lift it up a little bit and uh, it will turn over so stage 9 this is which is the uh, bullet seating which you have this little adjuster up here all you do is twist it uh, clockwise for down and anti-clockwise for up the moment it's all the way up so this powder die does around 3 to point something inches so it's already at the max so any more turning the bolt will actually come out so you don't want to do that or else you'll get the inconsistent uh, seating grab the uh, Barnes uh, match burners 175 grain uh, I was told that in America that uh, if you're doing F class uh, 175 grains uh, are really good uh, for the wind uh, it's less affected by it and uh, I'll just want to have a go for when I start doing a thousand yard shooting these are 1.3 100 and something 21 I think so these are really long bullets uh, these actually go about that far into the case I thought that would be pretty unsafe but it turns out uh, that it's not um, so you can load them to magazine length if you want uh, just be aware of your compressed load um, so you place the bullet inside the case and raise the ram up see that it's all the way in and the bullet is now to the correct correct setting that you've put it on uh, you can also check these with the caliber which you'll need that I've said at the start of the video I gotta find them can't see where they are so I'll get back to you when I find them. okay I've now found them all I do is get it to round three so the bullet fits in, place it flat on the bottom, push forward until it reaches the top, and the measurement is 2982, and I wanted 280, so basically it's pretty correct. Uh, you get different uh, bullet variations, um, so you usually do it by 0.5 or so depending on how long your case is um, so yeah that was correct and it, uh, like I said there will be variants of how long they actually are so it's not that big of a deal uh, if you want to be precise then it might be a big deal uh, out in the range so these are really long as you can see the and it's still as I said all the way inside that case there um, so we'll move on to the next stage place the bullet back into the other one placing the pin back in the next step is the crimping and crimping means that uh, this lip here gets pushed in to the the copper jacket here and uh, makes a seal um, just so it uh, contacts the bullet to 
make it not slip inside in the case if you push it any more down it won't go down so basically it's basically like sticky tape and it's held together so after that just raise it up again you'll feel there's a little bit at the end which pushing it up and the crimp is placed and the last step is to push it off and falls into the bin and a completed round has now been made and you'll just keep continuing the cycle uh, as I said it, this you can load it progressively or you can load it singly if you want depending I think loading them singly would be more accurate because um, the when you put the rounds in the actual press the little metal ball underneath uh, can be pushed up or down by this metal plate and if you put all of these end lips on it it raises the platform up a bit and it might have different uh, results on your actual uh, settings up the top so if you do one at a time uh, your settings should be fine uh, that's just how I'm doing it at the moment I don't really want to uh, do it progressively at the moment uh, it's good to check uh, what you're doing and the uh, finish round and uh, yeah thanks for watching uh, my how to reload uh, 3 out Winchester and uh, Hope you subscribe and uh, see more videos. I have uh, another video on uh, making 357 Magnum and uh, 38 Special. Also, um, so look forward to uh, seeing those videos. Um, I'll see you later.